Hello. Welcome to our session about getting the technical win or how to position Drupal to a skeptical audience. This isn't a technical session, it's a sales session. So we won't we won't go into detail of which system is better. We won't go comparing features or functions between different systems. But we'll look at it from a sales perspective and how we can leverage the technical um, features of Drupal to uh, win a deal. So uh, maybe before we start, by show of hands, who's on the sales side? Cool. And uh, who's on the technical side? Cool. Who went to the pub crawl yesterday? Uh, I saw that. <laughs> so um, maybe uh, a little bit about ourselves. We're very... So can you hear me without the mic or is it... Do I need a mic? Okay. Okay, cool. So I'll try to stand still. Um, so a little bit about us. We're a very eclectic bunch. Uh, we have Cameron. He's a Kiwi living in London. We have Raphael. He's from France, Paris. And myself, I'm from Belgium. Uh, they'll introduce themselves uh, later on in the session. Um, and what we do, we do all sorts of stuff. So we're pre-sales technical consultants at Acquia. So we own the technical part of the sale. We help salespeople um, um, well, position Drupal to customers and prospects. Uh, and we handle objections and suggest solutions based on Drupal. Um, but before we go any further, I have some really sad news before we can start our session. Um, it may be a bit harsh, um, so it, it'll get better. The next slide will be uh, very, it could, could hurt a little bit, but um, we'll put it into context. Um, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> but looking at this conference, we all know that it, this is not true. We all are very passionate about Drupal. We know it can do a lot of cool stuff. But if looking at it from a customer's perspective, they don't care about Drupal. They only care about certain other stuff. Uh, but on the bright side, nobody cares about Adobe either. Don't take a picture of that slide. <laughs> <laughs> it can't leave this room, right? Okay. So uh, nobody cares about Adobe, nobody cares about Word, uh, Sitecore, and nobody cares about WordPress. So it's a level playing field for everybody. The only thing that people care about is solving their own problems. That's what we need to achieve. So how can we make people care about Drupal by solving their problems? So we need to dig into what their uh, problems are. So it could be doing stuff cheaper. Could, could be doing stuff faster, uh, better, easier, uh, or they have a, the market is changing, they need to uh, increase revenue online. So different needs, different itches that we need to uh, uncover. Uh, and Drupal can handle all of that. So we will try to make people care as much about Drupal as we do, or the 2,200 people that uh, are around here. We, so we need to make other people care about Drupal. So. We'll go a little bit into the sales process and, and how we can uncover needs or problems uh, and how we can match Drupal uh, onto uh, that. So a lot of stuff is happening. So people on the sales side know this inside out, the whole, the, all the steps of a, of a sales process. We won't go into detail of all of them, uh, like lead qualification, which is pretty important. RFPs, let's hope not. <laughs> uh, I think we all hate them, right, RFPs? Okay, cool. Um, we'll go into the needs analysis, so discovery and um, trying to learn what they're, what they're trying to solve. And a little bit into the presentation uh, demo and proposal uh, phases on how to handle objections. So um, Cameron and Raphael will be um, dealing with those. So first thing that we need to do, even it's called getting the technical win, we still need to talk about business side because that's basically where the money comes from and they have a problem. So we need to uncover what the business wants to solve, basically. Once we have that established, we need to remove the technical blockers. So notice how we don't say convince people of Drupal. We just take away the technical blockers. Because once we establish the business case, there will be certain blockers that we need to take away for them to agree on Drupal. So convincing people is very hard. Removing blockers is easier. And then um, third part, Raphael will talk about demo uh, and how it could be important in a sales process uh, and what to watch out for um, and if it's needed, yes or no. So 
First of all, uh, about the business case. We need to uncover a lot of stuff. So we need to do research, we need to talk to a lot of people, we need to get the pain points from different stakeholders. We'll, in a enterprise, you'll have different people having different pains and they all trickle down. So let's say, for example, the marketer can't put pages up quickly enough, which leads to less revenue, so that's, uh, or less leads, that's the CMO problem. So they all have a different problem. So by uncovering all those problems in the different areas of the organization, you can actually build a map of what they're trying to solve. It's not, mostly it's not about one problem. It's not about we need a new CMS to generate pages. That will be a very hard win, but if you can uncover why they need a new CMS by asking the right questions, you can actually map your solution onto uh, those problems. Doing some research, what is their competition doing? What is the, mar the market uh, um, evolving to? Uh, if you look at newspapers, they're all running to a digital, uh, new digital roadmap, so uh, by knowing that, um, you can actually help them um, solve their problem as well. Um, and take a step back. That's our favorite sentence in pre-sales uh, because if you look at a problem, um, us as technical people, we're, our brain starts working and we're trying to solve it immediately. So uh, once in a while we like kick each other just to take a step back and to look at the whole picture. So uncovering more than just the problem at hand. Um, so Drupal can be more valuable. Uh, let's say, for example, a company wants to do blogging, for example. If you only see that problem, then Drupal might not be a good fit because maybe WordPress will win. But if you can uncover the digital roadmap, then Drupal could be a uh, very good platform to do all of that stuff. So, how do we do that? Asking the right questions, doing a lot of research. Was it, what is at stake? So will they lose money? Yes or no? This is a very important driver for uh, new CMSs. Um, also, by asking the right questions, you, by knowing their vertical, you can really uh, establish a trusted advisor relationship, which is really important because they'll start listening to you. You can uh, give them suggestions on how they should look at problems. Um, Cameron will go and, and Rafael will go into detail, but uh, not always saying yes um, and being sometimes a hard ass about some stuff and not just going with everything they want because we all know that customers don't always know what they need. So helping them there is a, a very powerful driver as well. Some, some questions to ask uh, to different people in the organization. What are your three major pain points that, un that will uncover like very explicit pains that they need solved? Asking those questions to a CMO, to a CIO will give different answers, uh, enabling you to map the problem. A very inter interesting question that we like to ask is what does success look like? It enables people on the customer side to think about what their ideal situation is, actually giving you almost a blueprint of their ideal situation. So you can use that to move to it. So you can leverage that knowledge and build Drupal and make it fit into that, um, their, that I ideal uh, situation. And another very powerful question is what happens if you don't do this? They could go maybe bankrupt, they could lose a business unit, whatever, so that will give you a sense of urgency uh, or how big the pain is uh, to solve. That all helps you in the sales process uh, and will help you map the technical solution. So some common mistakes that we encountered that we probably did ourselves as well uh, is basically not talking to the people that can make a decision because they only see maybe 10% of the problem. Um, you might solve their problem, but their boss doesn't have that problem, so he doesn't care. So he won't sign off, no deal, and we're done. Um, not understanding the pressure to contract. Is there a compelling event? So do they need to go live by a certain date? If that person can't ask that, the answer that question, he might not be the, 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 the right person to talk to. You need to go higher up. So you, you could be wasting your time as well. Uh, Raphael will talk about demoing. Really important not to demo too early. So like carpet bombing, coming in and showing everything without understanding what they actually need could hurt the deal and you could actually just look ridiculous at some point. So that's very important. Um, another one is about credibility. So balancing what they actually want uh, and what the market is evolving to. So helping them understand what they should need to. Not all customers know about the digital roadmap or what's happening on the internet. So you can help them and uh, 
really establish that trusted relationship. So that on the business side, so we uncovered the pain. Now we go into why they should use Drupal. And my friend Cameron can talk about that. Yeah, so I guess the, the reason we're all here is the pesky tech. Uh, I'm just going to quickly introduce myself. I, uh, a solutions architect like Fred and Raf, uh, I'm from New Zealand. I live in London uh, and I'm responsible for the UK and Ireland region. In fact, where if you're a partner, I may have worked with you. Um, and I've been at Acre for about two years. Before that, uh, I was a developer for seven years. So a lot of this sales stuff is really new to me, but now I've found it really fascinating. And a lot of things that happen in technology are because of human factors. So I'm sure I don't need to convince you of that, which I'm beginning to learn in detail. So what are the technical themes that we see uh, in pretty much every deal or customer scenario? Uh, Drupal is not the strongest tech, but there isn't actually a strongest tech. There's no magic bullet. There's only uh, something that's appropriate for the time. And there's a lot of ways that you can pick holes uh, in Drupal or any other tech. You'll often go into situations where people will have a favoured technology. So if you go into a, an incumbent who's a Microsoft house or a Java house or they really like hacking on Python or they love Ruby, uh, you just need to recognise that uh, and answer why Drupal uh, can do what they need to do and solve their problem. Uh, and it may not compete directly on particular things, but you don't want to get into that game because you'll always lose. You're removing technical objections. You don't want to waste your time. Uh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Sorry. Is this better? Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, so you're trying to remove objections. You're not trying to convince people. When they say, you know, Drupal doesn't scale, well, yes, it does scale, and we can demonstrate why with strong examples. You don't want to spend your time arguing about the minutia of technology when there could be much more important things at play. For example, if someone's asking you about reference counting in PHP 5, but the whole project depends on connecting to a CRM, which is never going to be opened up over the internet, that's where you should be spending your time. You want to try and identify those things very quickly. And there's a bit of an art to that, um, which you grow, you know, you grow that skill over time. Um, but identifying those high impact questions and activities is very important early on. So kind of on the more positive side, uh, I think we can agree that Drupal has the biggest community um, and it has huge technical resources. So that speaks to, in real business terms, uh, you can find developers relatively easily. It's a lot easier to find a Drupal developer than a CQ5 developer. Uh, there's a huge module ecosystem, uh, as we all know, 30,000 modules. Uh, and you can guide people through that, which adding real value. Um, a thing that we often say at Acquia with our wonderful marketing team is that you can innovate at the speed of the web. So you're not locked into a roadmap. Uh, if there's, there's a module for that. You know, There's some way that you can find a solution to the problem that's mature, it's tested, it's secure. But uh, it's all very well saying that intellectually, but you must lean on your examples. So it's very important to, to have uh, some stories, uh, maintain a narrative of technical problems that have been solved with Drupal uh, preferably in the customer's vertical or in someone they know. Uh, and there's a lot of resources around to have that. So if you're lucky, uh, whoever you work for, or whatever work you've done, you can talk about that directly. If not, uh, there's a lot of resources available. So uh, there's the DrupalShadeCase.com. Acquia has a lot of uh, case studies and resources on the website. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of sessions here, but uh, Drupal is not short of, of success stories. Uh, and you know, this thing about practical objections is really what I was talking about earlier, that you need to think about the actual end result. Don't, don't get stuck into the detail where it's not necessary. And the whole thing is building up to you being credible and trustworthy. It's okay to say that Drupal is not the best. It's okay to say, no, we can't do that, or uh, there's better ways to do that in other technologies, because that builds you up as someone who's not there to, uh, to bullshit them. You're not there to, to act like a yes man. Uh, saying no can be very, very powerful. So things you should remember during that process. Focus on the achievement. When, you, when they say, can Drupal do this thing? You say, yeah, it can do that. Uh, we can do it with views, or we can do it with a module, or we, can, we look at how NBC did it. But don't dig into the detail. It's, it's sticking to the bigger picture at all times. It's often a mistake that uh, I, as a technical person, and I've seen uh, other technical people do, is to dig right down into the detail. It goes to what Fred was saying about being passionate about the technology, digging into the, the fine detail. Generally, most people in the room are not concerned about how things are done. They want to know that they can be done. The how will come later. 
you'll find that there'll be people in the room uh, that will want to dig, dig, dig into a particular point. That's your opportunity to, to sort of build a relationship with them and say, hey, I don't think this person's speaking for the whole room. Uh, answer them respectfully, uh, but offer to go into more detail later. And if you can build up that relationship, um, that's something that's on your side for the future sale. These haters are going to hate. There's people who want to stop you succeeding. You might threaten uh, their credibility or their job security. They might, uh, you know, they might like their own tech. Um, or they might dislike your tech. You have to respect their position, but you need to align yourself with the people who can make the decision and who aren't going to kind of waste a lot of your time. So there's no point getting into the argument with the lead developer if the lead developer uh, is a contractor who's going to leave next week and the CEO really likes Drupal and he's got a roadmap uh, that's stretching out for the next year based on an open source technology. The kind of things that I see uh, getting challenged a lot, uh, there's a lot of things, but these are sort of very common. Security is a big one. I think that really goes more to uh, hosting in most cases than Drupal. And, you know, there's references that everyone has on the tip of their tongue, like the White House, a lot of U.S. federal sites, there's a lot of financial services sites, the New York Stock Exchange, WorldPay. Uh, these are companies for whom security is of the utmost importance. I think we all agree that Drupal is very secure, um, and we just you just need those references. There's uh, the Drupal Security Report, which is uh, open and available, which we'll go into more detail. And the hosting provider that you choose, I'm sure, can, can stand behind you on that. Uh, and the larger incumbents, uh, particularly on the non-technical side, will have a mistrust of open source. Someone who's been working in Microsoft for the last 10 years doesn't like you coming in and saying, oh, we've got no license fee, we're going to take away uh, you know, your recurring revenue based on commission, whatever. Uh, or people just don't, they haven't worked with open source, they don't trust it. That's an argument that I think we should all be able to make. Uh, and there's lots of resources around about why open source is, is a great solution. Uh, we, the similar theme is that we're the underdog uh, perceived, maybe not always actually an underdog, but we can be perceived as an underdog compared to incumbent <laughs> solutions of big organisations and um, failed or poor implementations. So a lot of that comes down to uh, a place where you, uh, you know, projects fail no matter what the technology is. Um, a lot of it comes down to project management, but this is a, a point where you can really demonstrate your value. You can say, yeah, Drupal is a huge uh, open source community. There's 30,000 modules. It's very hard to pick your way through all of that to find uh, where the sweet spot is in terms of quality and, and reliability, but we have that experience. We know what we're doing with Drupal, and we can demonstrate that with uh, example A, B, and C. So this is a really good uh, position where you can differentiate yourself as opposed to Drupal. Support and long-term vi viability, I think, is a very valid concern. Um, but I think it's demonstrated that uh, a community of this size with this much momentum is not going to fold away tomorrow. And there's a lot of commercial organisations that can provide support and maintenance uh, with an SLA attached. And I'm sure you know some of those names. Uh, Drupal can demo poorly, but I think Raf is going to cover that with great skill. Just remember, this is what people want to hear. Can we do it? Yes, we can. So... People are going to uh, argue with you. You just want to remove those objections so that they have no reason not to say yes. Okay. So my name is Raphael, and I'm based in France, as you can hear by, with my thick accent. <laughs> Sorry about that. So before actually talking about demo, I'm just wondering how many of you guys actually do demos in the sales process? A few, okay. So do you guys, who, who amongst you have prepared demo and that you run all the time to the customer or do you build, or who build custom POC each time? <laughs> so, sorry, so who build custom POC each time for demoing to customer? Not a lot, okay. So let's talk a, bit, a little bit about demo. So for pre-sales like us, sometimes we are sales guys saying, okay, I've just heard that customer on the phone. He wants to hear everything we have, everything we can demo. Let's have two hour demo, uh, demo meeting and show them everything. So in this case, well, no, that's not, that's not a good idea. And as Fred said, our favorite sentence in the pre-sales is let's take a step back. 
Because what you want to do with the demo is not demoing the full power of Drupal or the full power of your, your product. What you want to do is insist on, on a few key points that <coughs> really impacts the, the customer decision. And you want to emphasize, uh, stress these points and not just saying, look, what Drupal can do, everything. Yeah, but it, if you start that, you, you will never end the discussion because it, you can do everything with Drupal or with any other uh, tool. So you really need to uh, find what the, the customers want and just build a custom demo that fits this requirement and will speak to him. He will understand what you want to show and understand that Drupal will be able to do all the other stuff that all the CMS does, but he wants to have the proof that some of his concern will be answered with Drupal. You, you want to do the demo only to get the technical win and not to try to sell something. You're here to propose a solution to his problems. As Fred said, he wants to have solutions. You're not here just to sell all the products you have. So that means that you really have to push back all the demo uh, you're asked to do. You, you really want to do the most, uh, the, a lot of meetings with the customer and try to, to really understand what he wants because at the first time, he will say, I want this, and in the end, you will be demoing something completely different because you find out that he wasn't really sure of what he, wa he wanted. So try to really understand him, ask a lot of questions, and once you think you really know what he wants, demo that and show him that you understand him because that's the main point. If you understand, what, if, if you understand that you understood him, he will trust you even more. And don't depend on the demo to, to win the deal. So there's a lot of people ha here that didn't raise your hand, so you don't have to do a demo, but sometimes that can, that can do the real deal, um, that can really help you sign the deal at the end. So having prepared demo, so not all of you do custom one. So we, we really think that having a prepared demo with a, a beautiful theme that the customer can relate to a real life website and not just the basic Drupal um, theme, and with contents and scenario pre-baked pre in, the, in the demo with a lot of user and b being able to demo workflow and stuff like that, all, all that matters to him, and not only just a few mo modules that you put together and say, look, you can do all that with Drupal. Don't forget that people like pretty things, and especially in the business and marketing area, they want to see stuff that is good, that is very e easy to use, then can do stuff like drag and drop and beautiful Ajax stuff. They want to be impressed, so don't forget about the wow effect that can really help you during the demo. And try to have s stories around your demo, just not just saying this is feature A, this is feature B, etc. So as you can see here, it's just what I think is not a great example of what you could demo. So I'm not saying that's not a good website. I'm saying that if you want to demo stuff on this page, there is way too much information in it. So the audience will be, lo will be loose at trying to find out what are you talking about, which feature are you demonstrating, extra. So try to separate all the features in different pages so you can just navigate and have a clear discussion with the customer of what you're trying to show them and not just say, look, Drupal can do everything. So it's always the same. You have to know your audience. So if you have technical people, you can deep dive into technical stuff. But if you have business and marketing, you just want to tell a story that relates to what they want to hear and what they want to achieve. So d don't, how do you say that? Mm. So really try to figure out what their key user story that they want to, to, put, to do in their new website and try to make them into the demo. And to do that, it's a good idea to have a very powerful demo with a lot of stuff in it, but you don't want to, sh to show them everything you have in the demo, but during the conversation, if they want to see other stuff, you have all that stuff built in in, in, a, in a good demo. So have a, a, a big demo prepared, but just want to Specif uh, to show them just specific facts. And as it's a conversation with the, with the audience, then you can just uh, move around on the website and show other uh, functionality that you have. Don't forget to look at them and don't be mechanical. I know that some of us might do the same demo over and over, and at some point you can just do it like a robot, but don't forget that <coughs> this is a discussion more than just a presentation. So yes, you have the demo behind you, but he really wants to keep the conversation open and 
built on that trust that Fred and Cam told, talked about and just saying, yeah, this is how it works, this is how we've done it. And if you have that trust, that means that when you have demo effects, <laughs> you, you don't have to panic that much because if it trusts you, if you demo a lot of stuff that are currently working, if you have some glitches in your demo, that's not bad. Try to just do a, a joke and get out of it. <laughs> it's not always easy depending on what was the bug. <laughs> Hopefully it was a small one, but yeah, in the end it's more, it's a lot about having a discussion and getting uh, a good relationship with the customer. Try to, say sim try to stay simple and not to just say everything that we can do, this is very complex, we build that, 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 no. Just say it worked like this, this is what you wanted, right, yes. So have big impact with simple sentences and simple example. Don't forget to have backup plans. <laughs> if you don't have internet, you want to have a, a local version of your demo and maybe your <laughs> local demo won't work for any reason, so you want to have backup on the internet. Have a checklist of what you want to do. Some people love to have full scripts with all sentences and rehearse that and why not, but try to not read it and just, it's still the same, having conversation and making people uh, interested in what you're saying and what you're demoing. So that's why you have to keep it at the very few key features that will still interest them. If the demo uh, is two hours long, in the end, no one will care about what you're saying and what you're showing. And remember that there is a lot of way to do, to do a good demo, but a really bad demo is can be just worse than no demo. You can lose deal because you just messed up with the, with the demo and after that the customer is just, he doesn't understand what you're saying, he does, doesn't understand your product anymore. So he's just saying, okay, your product is not good. So have simple one or don't have one. And just a few words about building a large proof of concept when you do custom demo every time for the customer. Uh, I would strongly advise to be aware of what the next steps are, meaning that you want to know that the customer really wants to go further on the project and just want, it, it doesn't just want to see that it works and after that it's a stale project. So you, you really want to, to clear the expectation and, and know that if you succeed in the POC, maybe you, you will have a, a clear deal after that with him. Try to get the customer budget as well. It's very easy to say, it's hard to do. To do. But don't waste th three weeks on development if you only have a very small budget, if the customer have a very small budget. On the other hand, if you know that it's a massive project for a few years, you might want to spend that two or three weeks building that PLC. Don't go to the common pitfall of doing the full project. I have customers <coughs> that ask me or ask us to do a POC, but it was in reality the full project. Uh, so <laughs> don't do that. I, I know some, uh, some of us might have done it, so try to avoid that because in the end, uh, it won't help you that much more than if you have just done small proof of concept just to show that he will have what he wants to have. And why we do custom POC? It's because Drupal is awesome, and I really believe that thanks to Drupal, the community, and all the modules that we have, we can spin up demo way faster than a lot of our competitors, and we can demo stuff more, more powerful and um, a lot more uh, different functionality uh, than any other CMS. And if you want to have some specific functionality for that customer, it's really easy to develop. We all know that here. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that you, you will be able to spin up a demo way faster than any other competitor. And for that, Cameron will talk to us about an example. <coughs> Yeah, so I just wanted to talk about a recent example that we uh, we had a very uh, successful engagement with a long-standing customer uh, who expanded their business with us uh, in the UK. So a very large media company. Uh, we were aware we had had a big successful project with them earlier, uh, and but being a large company, those teams that were involved in the project that we had been successful with uh, were not informing every other team in the company. So we knew there were other projects going on. Uh, the particular project that we had an interest in was around a video-on-demand platform, uh, somewhere like a Netflix or a Hulu. Uh, the, they had a bit of a hallway conversation between teams and said, why don't you come and talk to Acquira about Drupal because we think that Drupal could be a fit here. Uh, we knew that Adobe had a presence uh, in the deal. 
um, but you know we agreed to meet and uh, it turned up myself another technical person and the sales guy uh, and walked into a room that was uh, plastered with whiteboards all around us and all we could see was Adobe AEM, uh, Omniture, uh, all of these Adobe products and a huge architecture diagram that someone had been whiteboarding out uh, and we thought, well, then this is a hostile environment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, we came in and to their credit, they were very good about explaining uh, from, from kind of that ground up uh, what they were trying to achieve. They had a pressure to uh, deliver this by a certain date because of certain uh, political environment within the organisation. Uh, they were a long way into the scoping of the project, assuming that Adobe would be, uh, you know, the technology that they chose for the web uh, client and front end. Uh, and they said, OK, well, this is what we're doing. This is the user journeys we're trying to uh, establish. This is the revenue that we're trying to see. And these are the technical things that we need to achieve what we need by given date. And so we went through that. And they said, why don't you come in next week when we're going to present the whole stack from top to bottom? Uh, and you can go away and come back to us uh, on, and tell us whether Drupal can do all this stuff. So, you know, we're looking at the stack, and it's like 50 components of this huge platform, really a very big platform. But what, uh, what we began to, when we began to realise that we had a real chance, uh, I mean, we, we were working with them directly and talking to them about these technical issues and talking about how we could solve them or how we could try something different. And we really began to build up a very trusted relationship. So, you know, myself, a, a colleague of mine, uh, someone in a, a non-sales role but technical role, all had a direct line with people at this, at this organisation talking about these issues, presenting alternatives. Uh, and that, you know, they said to us specifically, you know, we really like the way you work because uh, with Adobe, there's a huge organisation. Everyone's trying to get a licence fee. Uh, we don't have the level of response. They don't have the level of responsiveness that you have. Sure. So that was good. We felt positive about that. The other thing that you couldn't really argue with is that Adobe was going to charge a million pounds a year or something like that for licence fees. We could say, look, you can take that money and you could put it into improving your product. Um, that's all well and good but we got to the point where we wanted to demonstrate that that was actually possible. So we ended up going to doing something that we don't like to do unless there's a really compelling reason, which was the POC. And this speaks to Drupal's ability to be very flexible, dynamic, uh, have a very quick time to market, and to be able to integrate a lot of functionality very quickly. So we built uh, a proof of concept with a very um, limited subset of features, but that demonstrated the things that they wanted to see around editorial experience, uh, look and feel, um, you know, how the, uh, different stakeholders could influence different parts of the site and be separated from one another. So we spun that up in two weeks, uh, and they were really impressed that we could move so quickly, that uh, Drupal was such a flexible platform. Um, meanwhile, Adobe was still trying to work out how many licenses to sell them. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that this, you know, the, de the demonstration here is that you know, Drupal has got this big advantage over a lot of the proprietary competitors in that it is open and it is free and you can move very quickly. But the, really, the thing that really uh, sealed it for us, although there was a huge cost advantage, is that we built up that relationship that they felt that we were technically competent uh, and could be trusted to, to advise and we had the references to back us up. So, yeah, we were happy with that one, weren't we, Jim? Yes. Yeah, so uh, Jim's our uh, fearless leader um, and our team in pre-sales. We had a problem a couple of years ago where we would be asked to build demos or build proof of concepts. Uh, and what would happen is someone in, in our team or maybe we'd draft and other people from Acquia would build those Drupal sites from scratch every single time. And that was unsustainable. So uh, just from a, a, a you know amount of resource we had to assign to that, it didn't work. But it also meant that we were not... Um, you know, building with each time that we gave our demo or built our POC, there was no, uh, we chucked out everything we learned every time. So a couple of years ago, around the time that Fred and I started, uh, we decided to sponsor a project in the open source community uh, on Drupal.org called Demo Framework. So we have like two and a half people working full time, plus other people coming in who are building a framework uh, to demo Drupal and some of the best features in Drupal 7, uh, to, specifically for a sales context. So we show some of the, the, you know, the really wow features that Raf was talking about. Drag and drop with Panoply, in-place editing with edit module. Uh, we use workbench moderation. Um, we do is a responsive design. 
and it's designed in such a way that you can have what we call different content scenarios. So sitting underneath Demo Framework, we have something called Lightning, which is the underlying code uh, and information architecture. We then have an interface to plug content on top of that. Uh, so you can take uh, the Demo Framework and put, you know, if you specialize in a, in a particular vertical, you might put, for example, um, we have a, a partner who specializes in what they call membership organizations. So they make uh, the site, instead of looking like one thing, look like another thing. But the underlying technology is the same. So we're really trying to encourage people to use a demo framework. It comes with scripts and videos that allow you to tell the story and the narrative attached to the demo. Uh, and we would really like people to contribute. So, you know, as Equia, we contribute a lot in, uh, in terms of resources, both technically and uh, sales uh, narratives. But we, we'd love other people to, to join us. Uh, there's no obligation to push uh, your IP back into the community, of course. But, you know, the more help, uh, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. So we have got that in the resources section, don't we? So when we put the slides up on the... Uh, on the website after the session, you will be a link to the demo framework uh, slash project slash DF on Drupal.org. Uh, it's worth looking at. So, uh, how do we get the technical win? Uh, we build trust and credibility in the trusted advisor relationship. For me, in my role, I think that's almost uh, the key thing that I need to do. The salesperson uh, will work on the, you know, making the commercial case. Uh, and, and getting the, uh, the operational stuff around a sale done. But uh, for us to be in a position where we're trusted technically to deliver, uh, that, that's huge. You don't want to get put into an adversarial position, so you don't want to be fighting against the customer or, or at least members of staff with the customer um, because you, you're going to lose. And even if you win uh, sort of logically, you're going to lose emotionally, and that's, that's not where you want to be. Uh, if, if a customer puts up... Um, a whole list of things that technology can do, and you attack those points. If you get one of those points wrong, your whole argument goes out the window. You're not an expert on other technologies. Just stick to what you know. Uh, we know Drupal's fantastic. Let's, let's position it that way. And the biggest thing, as always, is just solve their problem. You know, Whatever their problem is or whatever their opportunity is, be, be there for them so you can help them with that. I think that's it. So there's the link of resources that we were speaking about. Uh, demo framework. Um, we've got a lot of case studies on acquire.com. Drupal Security Report for Security Conscious Customers uh, and Drupal Showcase, which is an open uh, list of compelling Drupal sites that people want to use as references. So, uh, any questions? Yeah. Do you have any experience uh, selling Drupal to folks in like the startup community? Oh, I wish David Hong was here. <laughs> okay. um, do, you, do you want to talk about that, Jim? <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I don't personally have a lot of experience. There are members of our team. Uh, for example, we have people on the West Coast uh, who do a lot of that. Um, I think we've had some some major startups that you know we reference um, that maybe aren't so small anymore. The Pinterest, you know. Um, but I think the it does use Drupal, Drupal too, in some places. Yeah, I think they have an internal uh, support community on Drupal. Yeah, um, we've, we've done similar things at Twitter. I guess it's not a start so much anymore. Can you think of any good examples? So what 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 sort of startups are, are you? Just like software as a service, okay. oriented web applications. Sure. I don't no, no, no. no. It might be more of a West Coast thing. I don't have any personal examples to draw on. Yeah, sorry. If you do have a, you do want to talk about that in more detail, come and find us and we can put you in touch with someone who has a lot of experience in that awesome. area. Yeah. yeah. Do we have any other questions? Okay, so um, government and higher ed and, and those kind of verticals are, are quite different in the way they do things. They're very uh, documentation heavy, very process driven. Um, Usually, they're quite they're quite um, open to the idea of open source. But what we get bogged well, I find that I get bogged down in the kind of the the contract and the procurement process. Um, the best thing you can do, and if if you have these resources available, is to have sort of like if you've done those deals a few times, the same questions will begin to come up again and again. So we we tend to have, for example, we have a big uh, paper on security that we send out often, and we say, look. 
you know, we can't divulge everything about security, but here's what we can say. If you have any questions, come back to us. Because if you get into a sort of, what about this, what about that, what about that, um, you'll be there all day. So you want to flush out the things that they think are going to stop the deal happening early, um, rather than wasting your time, well, spending your time on things that they just sort of are interested in. Yeah, part of the Australian deal is also building that trusted relationship. We've been working very hard with them, so being honest and helping them, basically. That was a really big part of the, of the win. And Drupal, of course. So it's not a loss. <laughs> demo. <laughs> we didn't put that on the slide. That's very that's dangerous. That's very dangerous to do a live demo. But <laughs> <laughs> do you have it on the, uh, on the laptop? I might have it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do a yeah. non-best practice doing a live demo. So this is actually a. Uh, Let me just get my mouse pointing a bit. All my private. Any other questions? Well, Cam said something on the laptop. Didn't ask him what he would need to see. Mm. <laughs> Everything, he wants to see everything. Let's show him the homepage, that's enough. <laughs> the other thing I think we have on the, on the booth, don't we? People running. Uh, so if you want to dig into any of these things in, in more detail, um, let's kill that, and I'll kill that, and I'll kill that. No. Uh, we you can go to the booth, the Acquire booth, and we'll have people running demos against these things. No. So we got the demo effect in full effect. <laughs> you have to make a yeah. joke now. Yeah, I have to make a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a demo framework. Uh, it uh, incorporates a lot of things uh, around responsive design and scenario. So the particular scenario we show <laughs> is a travel site. Uh, and one of the interesting things about having a travel site is that we can do uh, what we call content, community, and commerce. So we have content, uh, you know, standard Drupal nodes with fields, images, uh, and those sorts of things attached. But we also have uh, the ability to check out an item uh, through Drupal Commerce. Uh, and we have comments and uh, social media integration that does the community aspect. And so that uh, can be quite compelling to uh, a lot of uh, prospects who are used to buying I'm going to buy my social system, I'm going to buy my content system, I'm going to buy my, you know, my e-commerce package, and this is trying to package that all together. Let's do a time check. Um, we also do uh, responsive design from the ground up, so you can use this theme and you can edit it, edit it even the, uh, even the uh, admin menu is responsive. And what else can we show? We have... Yeah, so if I was to create a... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the wrong way to demo everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take notes. But I think that probably the best... Um, like, you can find any of us and we can take you through the demo in more detail. Or, uh, yeah, go and come to the Acquia booth and we can we can show you the demo. There's a lot of resources around this. I think the key thing for, for agencies and, and uh, development houses is this concept of having uh, demo scenarios so you can import your own content uh, as and when. Yeah. Just to bring it up. So this is the, uh, the demo. So yeah, we, this goes into it in detail and you can find the videos that will take you through uh, how to run the script and the actual documents that you can use to base your script on. So we're very happy to help you with this um, and we're very happy for you to help us with it if that's something you're interested in. No more questions? Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>